I mean, I don't know when it was, but I just like saw highlights on TV and I was like, I need to win that trophy. Like, I want that trophy. Okay. <laughs> That's sort of always been in the back of my mind. Winning the US Women's Open has its perks. It's probably been my best year yet. I won Evian last year, but the US Open is just a little bit different for me. For Minji Lee, one of the most thrilling benefits of her victory is bringing the trophy home to her native Australia. I want to leave the golf world better than I found it. And one of my biggest goals is being a good role model to the younger generation of golfers coming up and show them that you can be from anywhere and you can be a professional and you can win. Minji Lee just ran away from everybody. It's been a long journey for the game's newest star, from Australia's sand belt to a record-setting performance in the sand hills of North Carolina. The best that we've seen at the U.S. Women's Open. This is the story of the 2022 U.S. Women's Open. Minji moves the needle. This year, the U.S. Women's Open, presented by ProMedica, returns to perhaps its most quintessential venue, Pine Needles Lodge and Golf Club in the Sand Hills of North Carolina. There are more than 40 courses within 10 square miles, including the renowned Pinehurst No. 2, Mid Pines, and Pine Needles, all designed by Donald Ross, the great Scottish architect who called this area home for nearly 50 years. We like to think of this championship as the one. There it is. Look your right. The one that every young golfer dreams of winning. In hosting its fourth Women's Open over the last quarter century, Pine Needles continues to add to the area's rich golf legacy. You think about what's happened here over the years with Christy Kerr. Christy Kerr, the 2007 U.S. Women's Open champion. And Kari Webb. Kari Webb, another back-to-back -back champion at Pine Needles. Annika Sorenstam. Back-to-back -back championships for Annika Sorenstam. To be able to play the U.S. Open there, I was defending at that time, and it was just the coolest memory to have. Really, the legends of the game have all competed and won here on this beautiful Donald Ross masterpiece of a golf course. A glittering trophy is always on the line at a national championship, but this year, the Women's Open purse has nearly doubled to a historic $10 million. You know, the top two places earn checks of seven figures. How would that change your life immediately? It'd make life a lot easier. <laughs> um, it's career changing to be able to play in events with such big purses. It's like we're playing like the men. With Mike Wan, I think it's, it's super exciting what he's done with ProMedica and you know raising the bar this high and for us to play for that amount of money. It's an extra bonus. The women's game in general has grown dramatically even since I turned professional. So seeing the purse increases, the TV coverage, that's what we want. We want to grow the game and we want to leave it in a better place. The USGA are trying to really close that gap between the men and the women. It just means a lot to us and it shows that they care about women's golf and the LPGA. And I, I know it's only going to get better and better. Like every US Women's Open, the 2022 field is loaded with determined competitors focused on making history and taking home the most prestigious trophy in women's golf. The headliner is Nellie Korda. The former world number one is returning to competition after a blood clot in her arm sidelined her for nearly four months. Korda missed the cut at last year's U.S. Women's Open, but expects to contend after a breakthrough four-win season in 2021. And the Korda family has another major champion, and this time it's in golf. Lexi Thompson returns for a sweet 16th U.S. Women's Open. Last year, she held a five-shot lead going into the back nine of the final round at the Olympic Club, and then it all came crashing down. In a sad Sunday. Now she's back, looking for redemption.
Lydia Ko's return to form began when she broke a three-year victory drought in 2021. A star is born again. Once again proving she's among the game's best. And although she has 17 career wins and two majors, a U.S. Women's Open is missing from her glittering resume. Coming out of Duke University in 2009, Mina Haragai was considered a star in the making. More than a decade of struggles on various professional tours had her contemplating retirement. But swing changes and a renewed love for the game has Haragai resurgent at the age of 32. Okay, well done, my student. Double digits on the par from Mina Haragai. I know the U.S. Open's big, but it's just like any other tournament. You still have to hit the fairway and you still have to hit the green. You still have to play well. As a teen in Australia, Minji Lee was the top-ranked amateur in the world. In 2021, she won her first major at the Evian Championship in France. The Aussie rules. Minji Lee is finally a major champion. Now this talented 26-year-old has set her sights on the United States Women's Open. I've always been quite confident in my iron play and it's such a great feeling just to have that control, obviously, at the US Open when the courses are really, really tough and the greens are rolling like ice. <laughs> it's just, it's a really great help. This time it's Asia's major for Jin Young Ko with a birdie at the last, no less. Two-time player of the year, Jin Young Ko, figures to be a factor until the bitter end. She nearly won the Women's Open in 2020, and her game has only become more polished since. The week begins with a bittersweet moment for defending champion Yuka Sasso. Good morning. Good morning. Bringing it back. Yeah the annual tradition of returning the Harton S. Semple Trophy. Okay. See you. <laughs>
The grass doesn't care if you're a man or woman, all right? It doesn't care. The grass just wants to grow, it wants to do its thing, and it's our job to take care of it. So I invite everybody who might be the slightest bit interested to give it a shot. Now I can't wait to see what happens next. I always say I dare you to live, and here I am daring to live, and look what happens. Here among the Carolina pines, the air is thick with some early June humidity and the anticipation of the biggest championship in women's golf, the 77th U.S. Women's Open, presented by Prometica as Pine Needles plays host for a fourth time. Welcome to round one from Charlotte, North Carolina, Allison Emery. This year, 29 amateurs have qualified for the 77th U.S. Women's Open, presented by ProMedica. But only four will be playing the weekend. Including Rose Zhang, fresh from team and individual NCAA titles at Stanford. The world amateur number one continues to impress. Oh yeah, great approach. Sweden's Ingrid Lindblad is another amateur having an unforgettable experience. On Thursday, she's paired with her idol, Annika Sorenstam. When I saw that I'm playing with her, I was like in shock. <laughs> I was like, this cannot be true. Please welcome from Sweden, Annika Sorenstam. Annika officially returns to the U.S. Women's Open for the first time since 2008 by way of her win at the U.S. Senior Women's Open. Just like old times, Annika Sorenstam is a USGA champion again. With 72 LPGA wins, 10 major championships, and three U.S. Women's Open titles, including her win here at Pine Needles in 1996, Annika remains the most dominant female golfer of all time. She's won so many more times than all of us. Be careful, the goat's coming out. It's amazing to have Annika here. She's made such a big impact on the women's game. We're so happy that. <laughs> the fans have been super supportive. You know, a lot of, you know, cheering coming up to the greens, and so it warms my heart. What a nice, uh, warming welcome here at Pine Needles. And here is Annika. Quick tee pickup, as usual. Swing hasn't changed much, nor has that straight ball flight. What a moment for the 22-year-old to play with a legend. But on this day, it's the Louisiana State junior, Lynn Blatt, who plays like a Hall of Famer. Hit a few shots close to the pin, and then my putting was great today. Okay. I exhaled a little bit on that, yeah. but an excellent par. Made a few par saves and made a few putts for birdies, and they worked from <laughs> fairway to green. No amateur has ever gone lower than 66. <laughs> that putt for history. Wow. History made. The lowest score by an amateur all time at the U.S. Women's Open. Ingrid Lindblad, a 65. She's really impressive. She's a fearless player. You know, she's confident in her own game. On the first tee box, I get her scorecard. I'm like, I have Monica's scorecard in my hands. <laughs> but it was really cool. We had fun out there. She has pumped me for a few birdies. And it was fun. You know, we talk about growing the game of golf. We talk about the next generation of girls. It's so neat to just see that women's golf is in good hands. Meanwhile, Sorenstam struggles to find consistency in her first major championship competition in 14 years. Overall, I thought I drove the ball really well. You know, I had a few uh, minor good iron shots. A few better, I think I would have been super happy. You need to be strategic here. You need to be on the right side of the green. And in the middle of the round there, I had some really long pass. The living legend shoots three over 74 on Thursday, finding herself in danger of an early exit. She'll have some work to do tomorrow to make the cut. Yesterday, I don't think I realized what happened. When I got back to the hotel, I'm like, whoa, this is pretty good. <laughs> 
Ingrid Lindblad's biggest fan, her mom, Cecilia, traveled 4,000 miles from the west coast of Sweden to watch her daughter play in her second Women's Open. She told me I got an invitation and I would go there. Can you come? <laughs> I can't believe how, how big this is to be here and participate. I can't see that she's nervous, so to say. And how confident did that stroke look for an amateur sleeping near the lead of the US Open? It's hard with all the leaderboards you see like everywhere. You're just trying to focus on your game and not change your game plan. Third on the win list with those 72 wins. Soaking it in. While Annika struggles to a missed cut in her return to Pine Needles, her fellow competitor deftly navigates its challenges with a second round 71 to remain in contention. Sensational the first two days here at Pine Needles. Ingrid Lindblad, what a performance. All right, welcome back to the interview area of the 77th U.S. Women's Open presented by Prometica. We are here with world number two, Nellie Korda. Nellie, back for the first time in a while. How are you feeling? Excitement to be back. Yeah, super excited. Um, feeling good. Yeah, everything's good. Took a couple months off, but um, body feels great, and I'm just so happy to be out. In her return from injury, Nellie Korda doesn't skip a beat. She uses finesse and creativity to attack pine needles. I definitely had a lot of adrenaline on that first hole. I like kind of felt sick how much adrenaline I was feeling and then calmed myself down and I think all of it came together really well. I've been impressed from what I've seen so far from Nelly Corey. Hopefully I can continue building into the next couple of days. Wonderful spot to putt from. The problem is a little longer than she wanted. Yeah. Does it matter? She posts a pair of under par rounds and is a major threat heading into the weekend. From the Republic of Korea, Jin Young Ko. <laughs> World number one, Jin Young Ko, arrived a week early at Pine Needles, looking for every edge in her quest to win a third major championship. My coaches came here for uh, five days, and I practiced a lot last week, and I found something in my swings, and it works, but we'll see. Just carrying some speed. Oh, no! oh, Perfect speed now. I was trying to just, like, smooth putt, but I had like crush it and <laughs> my caddy said when you putting I thought oh please God and then <laughs> bull was hitting the flag and then going I make party and next hole I had great drill to 20 meters from the second shot and I was aiming to the right as the TV tower bull goes straight there and I got eagle. Lydia, you have had an unbelievable season, haven't finished outside of the top 25. How does your game feel right now, and what's your mindset coming into this week? I don't think anyone ever feels like they're perfect. There's always something that could improve, and even when things are going well. So it's, it's nice to kind of have my attention and focus on the things that I want to work on, um, and hopefully the things that I was able to will work this week. After two rounds, Lydia Ko, the youngest major winner in the history of women's golf, is also in the conversation. Right, at it. She begins her week with a 72, then rallies with a 69. You would think that Lydia would have the game for uh, the US Women's Open here. She's got the game pretty much anywhere she goes. Sweden's Anna Nordquist has won three legs of the career Grand Slam, but continues the quest for her first U.S. Women's Open. I mean, the course is hard, but I really didn't make a lot of mistakes out there. Some of the holes, you just gotta hit the right areas on the greens, or they're gonna roll away really far. Five back nine birdies on Thursday propel her to a 67. Wow. Off the green, from off the green, <laughs> Anna's making it from everywhere. On Friday, her putter stays hot as she follows it up with a 68 to tie for third place heading into the weekend. 
It's very solid today, you know, trying to be patient and when you have a few opportunities, try to capitalize on them, but you can't be too greedy out there because the course is going to bite back. We have a chance here for a champion. Great opportunity here for Yuka Sasso. And she makes it. And Yuka Sasso is the US Women's Open champion, a new star in the women's game. Defending champion Yuka Sasso came to Pine Needles with hopes of a repeat. But eight bogeys on Thursday is a reminder that the US Women's Open doesn't play favorites. Sasso goes on to miss the cut by six shots. The last time Michelle Wee West competed in a major championship in this area, she won it all, just up the road at neighboring Pinehurst number two in 2014. Once again, the boisterous crowd was on her side, but this time Wee West shot 73-74 to miss the cut. It just uh, got unlucky at times, you know, just was above the hole one too many times and, you know, just trying to figure out those short putts and how much it breaks and, you know, just not having much speed on them. I just got off to the wrong start with, like, my reads and just didn't trust my eyes. It's definitely a bittersweet week. I wish I, you know, would have ended on making the cut. Overall, I had a very positive experience, had a lot of fun. Gentlemen, this is the 224 tee time. Please welcome from Delray Beach, Florida, Lexi Thompson. Lexi Thompson is now a U.S. Women's Open veteran, but in 2007, a 12-year-old Thompson played in her very first championship right here at Pine Needles. I know it would be an awesome experience coming here at such a young age, and it is. I don't remember much of the golf course besides number 10's tee shot because I just remember, again, how nervous I was and I was so happy that it was raining because there was nobody out there following. <laughs> Seeing it up here when I was 12 is the reason why I am where I am today because I realized then that this is what I wanted to do. Now 27, she has played in every women's open since, including three top five finishes in her last four starts. On Thursday, Thompson was once again among the leaders. And Lexi delivering. I've just been trying to focus on my own game and my emotions. That's all I can control. Just try to stay in the moment. What a shot. Lexi Thompson on in two. It landed perfectly right into the first cut and kind of killed the speed off it. Ended up about 20 feet short. Lexi Thompson for Eagle to share the lead. Yeah! Made the putt, it was going a little firm, but it made it. After a superb opening round 68, Thompson follows that up with a solid 71 and enters the weekend as a strong contender. Here it comes. There we yeah. go. Could it be for Lexi Thompson? Could this be the week? From Florida to California and around the world, challengers are drawn by the promise of U.S. Open glory. What a round of golf Mina is putting together today. What a show she's putting on here. Monterey native Mina Haragai is the surprise leader on Thursday with a 7 under 64. We actually missed our flight to the US Open. I was the last one to register. <laughs> I only play the back nine on Wednesday. And yeah, Thursday, I ended up shooting 7 under without seeing the front nine. <laughs> She make it? She did. Come on now. I was hitting a lot of fairways. I hit a ton of greens, and I made a lot of putts. Someone say like, "Oh, this is your first time shooting in the 60s in the U.S. Open." I was like, "Oh, I didn't even know." A spectacular round of golf, Mina Haragai. Wow. And on Friday, she sets out determined to fortify her lead. Second round was just more of the same. I was. You know, riding the momentum, 
focus on each shot, stay in the present, um, trying to keep my mind very calm. Just trying to slow down my thoughts, slow down my mind. I've kind of been in a situation like this before, you know, maybe not the outright lead um, at a US Open, but I've been through several moments of um, crazy nerves and I was able to get through it and learn every time. You know, you're excited. Uh, it's the good nerves. Mina for birdie to close out round two. Obviously, I didn't shoot seven under again, but I played another solid round. I was very proud of myself for the week. We've always felt like the US Open was uh, a good place for Minji Lee to, to show her particular skill set. In 2012, Australian Minji Lee won her first USGA title, the US Girls Junior Championship, and afterwards offered up a bold prediction. You think there's going to be a few more of these USGA championships in your future? Definitely, yep. Uh, I'm coming. I was not expecting it. I just went there just to see where my game was at. I think it was then, my first um, trip to the States, I got back and I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Now, she has her eyes on an even bigger prize. Today was the first day, so I was trying to play smart. I was pretty solid all day. On Thursday, a flurry of birdies keep her within three shots of Haragai. I putted really well. I had really good speed on the greens today. I've always been quite um, confident in my iron play, and just um, how consistent I can be. So just to have that control, obviously, at the US Open, when the courses are really, really tough, it's a really great help. On Friday, Lee's putter gets even hotter as she serves up a 66 and enters the weekend tied for the lead with Haragai. Minji Lee inside of 14 feet at 16. A share, rolling it in again. Whenever I have a birdie opportunity, I try to take advantage of that and then just do whatever I can that is in my control. Just a gorgeous late spring Saturday in Southern Pines, North Carolina for round three of the 77th U.S. Women's Open. The stage being set for another spectacular weekend in women's golf. As Pine Needles glistens on a sunny Saturday, the moving day drama heats up. The main characters are in place. Surprising amateur Ingrid Lindblad. Superstars Nellie Korda and Lydia Ko. Co-leaders Mina Haragai and Minji Lee. All of them featured players on the biggest stage in women's golf. Lydia Ko, one of those players trying to make a move up the leaderboard on this Saturday. This is one of the biggest crowds I've seen at the U.S. Women's Open. It's nice to play in front of them, and I feel like even though it's the same as any other 72-hole event, this week just feels a little longer, a little tougher. Good opening nine for Nelly Korda, two under, and this is going to be a birdie. We think about where she was one year ago. Yes, uh, you, you've mentioned it. Four months off out of competition due to the, the blood clot. Honestly, super special. I don't think I've ever had that big of a crowd following me at a Women's Open or in general on a Saturday. For everyone to say that they're happy that I'm back uh, felt really nice, too. I think she's exceeded my expectations and everybody's expectations. And this is just tremendous to come back from what she went through. With Corda making an early move, the pressure only intensifies for the final groups. Lindblad for a kick in birdie at three. Started off pretty hot, birdie at three, birdie at four, and I was like, I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> she played with Anna for the first two days and with number one in the world, Jin Young Ko, today. It was very impressive. She was playing with a high level of confidence. The former world number one starts the round three shots off the lead. Hopefully this one's going to draw back because that started out to the right. Oh, it has. What a shot. That's the closest I've seen. And quickly cuts it to two. But the duel of the day is still to come. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 144 tee time. 
Please welcome from Australia, Minji Lee. The fans were really cool today. I mean, there was a lot of them out there. You know, I'm just going to stick to what I know. And, you know, I've been to plenty of US Opens, pressure situations like this before. So just take away um, my experience from the other events and um, the other Opens. Third round, a little more nerves because there's a lot more people, like a lot of attention on you, your final group, two sums. No. Wow. Oh. After trading pars for the first four holes, Lee slips up. Oh, and she'll fall out of the tie for the lead. And Haragai strikes first. Level digits under par for Mina Haragai. Anything can happen. You know, don't get too high, don't get too low. But a composed Lee won't stay down for long. Got one back that she gave away. I played really well on the third day. I was just not as nervous playing the third round than I was the final round. As the leaders trade birdies throughout the afternoon, outside threats begin to materialize. And on the 12th, Lydia Ko has a chance for a birdie and slowly creeping her way up this leaderboard, getting it to five. Lydia Ko moves into the top 10. I never got too excited or never got too down when I was out of position, and I think that's what you got to do while, you know, it's the US Women's Open. There's always that little bit of adrenaline and a little bit of nerves that maybe necessarily don't come at any other event. Lydia Ko, second on the way at 18. Her front left hole location today. Oh, terrific. It's a long week, and I'm just trying to play the best golf I can, and. It's such a great golf course, and hopefully I'll be able to finish off my week well and uh, see where that puts me at the end of tomorrow. Meanwhile, three late bogeys thwart Nellie Korda's bid. Oh, that's a rough miscue there. That's brutal. Not pleased right now, but she looks back on the effort this week. Definitely not the finish I wanted. That was tough. I'm sure that was tough to watch, too. <laughs> Playing just in front of the leaders, Lindblad and Jin Young Ko continue to apply pressure. A little bit above her feet here. Make the wedge go a touch left. Wow! Player for the dramatic. Oh, I love it. You love to see it. She just sucks us all in with her energy and her enthusiasm. And then I saw it, and I thought it went in at first, because the ball was right behind the pin from where I was standing. And then I kind of heard the crowd, and I, I was like, yep, that's close. <laughs> Then, Jin Young Ko produces some artistry. Just been able to put together the round that she needed to get right in contention, but look at this to finish. I didn't expect uh, the results, so I was ecstatic. I was euphoric. And so um, if I do well for the last four holes tomorrow, and I think I will have a good result. Got a solid strike on that. I was so nervous, but to be able to hit good shots when I'm that nervous, I was super proud of. But Minji was playing great. She made a ton of putts that week too, it was crazy. Minji Lee, one behind, Mina Haragai. Yeah, she's been in good form. Yeah. So back in front, 11 on the par. I think the third day is when I won the event. The key here is speed control, which I know she's worked a lot on coming into this week. Speed was good, actually. The greens were quite slopey and really big, so I think um, just my like lag putting was just really on that week. That was really good. Two birdies in a row. This would be for three birdies in a row. Yeah, I was happy with you know eight, nine. Uh, able to answer her birdie putt there, but she hit some great shots the next few holes, and I just couldn't keep up with that. But you have to stay relaxed over this part so fast. Oh, wow, nothing but the center. Nine iron for Minji Lee here for her second, and that is so well judged. She's going to give herself a good look at birdie. Aragai struggling a little bit. This for a par. Oh, and just right now making too many mistakes. Yeah, that's going to be back to back bogeys. Meanwhile, Minji is on a tear with the birdies. I didn't really think about how Mina was playing. You know, I was just trying to make 
as many birdies as I could and try and post a good score. Very nice. That was just a soft, rhythmic shipping stroke right there. And what a three-day total, the best that we've seen at the U.S. Women's Open. Despite Haragai's valiant fight, it is Lee that breaks away from the field, finishing three clear at a championship record 13 under par. My approach is going to be the same as the last three days. I'm just going to try and make as many birdies as I can. An historic week at a cherished championship today. Crescendo's in Carolina. It's the final round of the 77th U.S. Women's Open at famed Pine Needles. And the race is on for the biggest prize in the women's game. A peaceful morning at Pine Needles is a stark contrast to the swirl of emotions Min Ji Lee is feeling. Can she replicate the feat that her mentor and Aussie legend, Kari Webb, pulled off 21 years ago right here at Pine Needles? I think I probably met Minji when she was about 13 or 14, um, so I've known her quite a while. You know, she carried herself very well. She, um, like, she was always fairly mature for her age. Refinement would come, and then she would also, un you know, learn the keys that need to happen to win tournaments and then to win majors. Webby has kind of been a constant in my life. You know, whenever I do well, um, she's always the first person to text me. She's just been a great influence and kind of role model um, over the years as well. I really thought that Pine Needle suited her game. You know, she was, she's a good ball striker. She hits it high, which she needs to be able to do. I just thought she'd have enough confidence to at least be there on Sunday with a chance to win. We had a really late tea time, so woke up late and had a good breakfast, and then I went to the golf course and did my same routine. I just always try to keep my routine when I'm under that much pressure, um, always the same. So it was good that I can have something that I could repeat really easily. I think Sunday, it was pro similar to Saturday, but I think the pressure that I put my on myself and just the pressure of the situation just made it extra hard. Championship Kari did. That's a down the left center with a draw. Should be just fine. I don't know if anybody could be totally comfortable on Sunday at the US Open. It's probably the most nerve wracking day I've had in a long time. The second hole, actually, that part, I, it was just the perfect speed and it just went right in the middle of the hole. Rolls in a long birdie putt. It speaks to the attitude in her approach of today, in that she's not trying to protect her lead necessarily. Early in her final round, Lee extends her lead to five shots, while the rest of the field struggles with the exacting conditions. Uh, hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was definitely a battle out there. The greens kind of got a little crispy. Pins were obviously, it's a Sunday of a major, Sunday of a US Open. We were all expecting it. Maybe not as sharp as the last couple of days. Finishing off three bogeys in the last four holes is probably not the best way to finish. You think you hit a good shot, and I mean, it has a lot of break or it's really fast, so par is probably pretty irrelevant uh, on a course like this. Uh, I mean, I shot two over, but it's probably one of the best two overs I've hit. <laughs> Mina Haragai battles until the final putt drops, grinding all day for the best finish of her career. I wasn't hitting it as well on the final rounds. So I, I had to scramble a bit, but my short game did save me. Gave us all a bit of a scare in here. What a shot. There is that two shot cushion. Really steady on that one. After I birdied 15, I was one or two shots clear of the person in third. And so that's when I started to get really nervous and actually like to the point where my stomach started to hurt. I felt like I was playing for the win, even though I was just, 
just playing for a second. The record payout of $1 million serves as a nice consolation prize for finishing runner-up. When I thought about it, I was like, man, that's a lot of money. <laughs> and when it hit my bank account, I had to like take a screenshot of it because it was just, I was like, wow, I can't believe it. Terrific week for Mina Haragai. 72 today, nine under overall, and all by herself in second place. And a chance for another birdie for uh, Minji Lee. Movement in this one, though. And that was so well done. Minji Lee increases her advantage here at High Needle, six shots ahead. I'm sure she was freaking out a little bit uh, when she was playing, but she seemed very calm and controlled. I had full confidence in her uh, finishing it off. You know, US Open is, is a tough test of golf, and I think it tests you the most mentally. Um, you could be at the top of your game physically hitting the ball great, but get really frustrated too early in the, in the tournament, and then it's just a grind from there. Tactically, she just she played the course perfectly. I was pretty nervous all day, to be fair. Um, you know, I started good. I had two birdies off the bat. I didn't hit it that well. I had really good saves um, up and down. Just a replay over and over again. Why would you ever doubt it? Golf, golf is easy when you play like that. I think if we looked up poised and collected, confident, in the dictionary, we'd see her picture. To command this championship. Yeah, it takes a lot of patience and belief. For the biggest one of them all. Lee's grit is exemplified by her final round performance, as she is one of only five players to shoot par or better on Sunday. And now that walk up to the green. I think she's just about at that point where she can start to enjoy the walk now. This final walk is the culmination of a lifetime of work and fulfills a promise Lee made more than a decade ago. You think there's going to be a few more of these USGA championships in your future? Definitely, yep. Uh, I'm coming. I actually was like, I'm just going to soak this all in, walking down that hole and um, walking towards the putting green. I was like, this is unlike any other experience that I had. It was awesome. I actually got a tear in my eye because I had known her since she was so young. And because I had won there too, I think. Um, it's great that another Aussie has a part of history there at Pine Needles because it's such a special place and, and a special place for women's golf. I was just really proud of her. She just ran away from everybody. Min G. Lee wins the U.S. Women's Open at High Needles. I think I definitely cried when she held that winning part just because we're a pretty emotional family. Mum always cries no matter what. It was just a special moment for the family. People ask, why Pine Needles? Why four times? I think you all just experienced why Pine Needles and why four times? Because it creates great champions. We are thrilled to present the historic Harton S. Semple Trophy to Minji Lee of Australia. I want to leave the golf world better than I found it and being a good role model to the younger generation of golfers coming up and being able to show them that you can be from anywhere and, and you can do it. It's a big inspiration for me and hopefully I can inspire the younger generation too. For Pine Needles, a fourth US Women's Open is in the history books. And for Minji Lee, an open breakthrough is complete.